Here we have the top yoke. It's been powder coated in a satin finish, including the clamps at the top, the two clamps and the handlebars. I've already fitted brand new bolts and washers and two new chrome holders for the various cables. The headlamp brackets and all the relevant fasteners. Notice the order that they're going. It's the rubber and then the bigger of the flat washers. And then the covers. Then the headlamp brackets themselves. And then the little chrome rings on the top. They must go in that order, otherwise they won't fit. And as you can see, these are the seamed headlamp brackets. This is a Z1B of course, so and they have the seamed headlamp brackets, not the seamless on the early models. We have one of the fork legs. Now the lowers have been polished by Steve Smethurst. Comes up beautiful. And uh, that's a new chrome reflector on there. And of course, the fork tube itself, you know, that's a new part, uh, along with the new fork seal and the new dust seal. And also we fit a, a new fork top nut as well. They're always chewed up, people using their own spanner to get them off. The internals are the original ones, the springs have been checked for length and they're okay and it's been filled with 185 cc's of 10 weight fork oil. You don't want them too hard, and you don't want them too soft. 185 cc's of 10 weight seems to be about just right. As you can see I've put some more of the black parts on. I've put the swing gam on which has been powder coated uh, gloss black. It's been fitted with new bushes, new bearings, and new sleeve, and new end caps. I've also fitted a new set of rear chrome shock absorbers. And I've also fitted a centre stand, you can just see it there. Um, I'll put that on now because it's just easier to, uh, to do it when there's no other parts on. I've also fitted the regulator rectifier. This is one of our combined units. You can just about see it there under the battery box. I've put that on now because it's such a pain to get to later. Uh, with the uh, two 6mm bolts that hold it to the battery box and I've also fitted the inner rear fender, the plastic part although that'll have to come off again when I fit the, uh, the final chrome rear fender OK, so now we've fitted the rear chrome fender it's a short one of course because the long one's not available anymore with its tail light loom sticking out there and the little rubber to stop the number plate from vibrating against the mud guard uh, because we've fitted that, of course, now we can tighten up the inner rear plastic fender, which there it is. I've also fitted the uh, seat lock assembly. There it is with its little lever. And, of course, the centre stand's fitting now. There it is. Fitted that earlier, of course. Now we've moved back round to the uh, back end of the bike. We've fitted the chrome grab rail. New fasteners on there, the top of the shock absorbers, and we've also fitted the rear indicator stems. It's just easy to fit them at this point before you put the tailpiece on or any body work. So now we've fitted the tail light bracket. This has been powder coated in satin black. We've used new rubbers. Um, you can buy the mounting kits, the rubber mounting kits from Z Power. Rather than buy all the individual parts, Z Power sell all the bits in a, in a kit to do these things. That's fastened to the rear fender. Okay, what we've got here now is the assembled front wheel. Um, we've used the original hub, which has been powder coated in satin black, along with the speedometer gearbox. That's also been powder coated in satin black. New tab washers and new bolts to fasten the uh, disc to the hub. Uh, new rims and new spokes. We've also fitted it with the Dunlop Gold Seal tyres, which were uh, more or less copies of the original fitment tyres. Um, I mean, they're freshly made, they're not the original ones from 1975, of course. These are much better, much better made tyres. They do actually work, uh, but they do keep the old fashioned ribbed styling that the uh, the Kawasaki Z1 had. We'll be shortly fitting that to the uh, forks.
Okay, so as you can see, the front wheel's now fitted. It's in there. It's clamped in with the two bottom uh, nuts on the uh, bottom clamp. Note the position of the speedo gearbox. That's just about right there. If it's too low, you'll, the cable won't reach and you'll probably rip it out. If it's too high, it'll just interfere with everything else. So just make sure it's about there. You can just see it sticking out there. New wheel bearings were fitted, of course, along with the zinc plated front axle. There's the other side. You'll notice the twin disc, of course, because we're having twin disc set up on this. Uh, mud guards fitted. And at this point, you've got to fit the, the cable guides because they bolt onto the fork leg. They're sandwiched between the front fender and the forks. I don't know if I mentioned it before when I was doing the frame, but that's the, um, that's the frame number sticker. They only fit these to American models, so if you haven't got one of these, don't worry, because if your bike's not an American one, it won't have it on. It was American legislation that it has to have the number on there and the date of manufacture, which is not always the date of when it was registered. As you can see, that's 1074, which is October 1974, but this bike wasn't registered until uh, about four or five months later in uh, 1975. If yours is an English model or some of the European models, it just has the frame number stamped on the side. So don't worry about that if you've got it missing. There's the steering lock, which has been put into place. It's held in by a little grub screw, which you can see there. That's all that holds it in, but it's a sufficient. I don't, I've never known of one to fall out. And here we have everything for the brake system. That's the front brake. It's going to be a double disc setup. So, uh, of course, there's two calipers. Uh, starting from the top, we've got a double disc master cylinder. And then the bolt in the rubber boot, the front long brake hose, because it's got the high bar, so it's the long brake hose. The four-way splitter with the um, front brake light switch and the bolts fitted there. Then you've got the two flexible hoses, the two brackets, one for the left and one for the right, with their uh, relevant rubbers. Going down to the calipers, one left and one right in their fixing bolts. And the two metal pipes, which go to the caliper from the flexible bottom hoses. Uh, those are going to be fitted just later on. So now as you can see we've fitted the front brakes. There's the left hand caliper with its metal pipe going to the flexible rubber pipe and there's a little clamp there, the guide that holds it. That goes up to the four way splitter there. The front brake light switch is now fitted. Bit of a strange one that. Um, unlike the Japanese it's, it's actually not a metric socket that's required. It's a one inch socket required to put that on. And the thread's a tapered thread, something they must have picked up from the British. There's the bottom brake pipe banjo bolts with new washers. Always put new washers on, it's not worth messing around, you don't want them leaking. There's the right hand caliper with its relevant pipes, all fitted. And that's finished, just waiting for the top one to fit to the master cylinder.